Although Big Bang advocates claim the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation as conclusive proof of their theory, history actually shows that there is a long line of well-hidden predictions previous to those made by Big Bang theorists. Not only were these predictions prior to those of Gamow and associates, but more importantly, they were made without any need for an expanding universe and with far greater precision. This shows us that observations such as the background temperature of space have no preference for one or another theory and therefore may not be used as definitive proof of any particular model. The fact that a theory is able to describe an observation does not mean that the observation proves the theory. This is Bob Wilson at Bell Laboratories. The standard picture of the Big Bang says that we, we aren't here. We cannot be here because... <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> the, the, because there isn't, hasn't been enough 13.7 billion years, there's not been enough time for the debris of the Big Bang to congeal or, or into, under, under the force of gravity into galaxies like our Milky Way. So the standard picture predicts that we should not be here. What we do is we say, oh, there's a lot of missing stuff. You know, there's all this matter out there and it's completely dark. Um, we can't see it, but it's got gravity, and its gravity speeds everything up. And there's another more technical reason why the Big Bang doesn't work. So we have to tag on this kind of period of super fast inflation in the first split second of, second, first, first split second of the universe. So all these things are bolted on in yes, an ad hoc uh, way mm. onto the standard picture. So we have the Big Bang, doesn't work, so we tag on inflation. That doesn't work, so we tag on <laughs> dark matter. That doesn't work, so we tack on dark energy. It's kind of a bit like the, the Greeks. You know, the Greeks were trying to explain the planetary orbits and um, they, they were really, they really loved circles. Yes. You know, they, they really loved the idea <laughs> of circles. Planets didn't seem to move in circles, so they thought, well, maybe they move in circles within circles. And then they move within circles within circles within circles. And they kept adding these epicycles on. And it turns out you can explain anything, anything at all by adding epicycles. And of course, we now know that in fact the planets move in elliptical orbits. So it kind of feels a bit like that, that we keep tagging all these things on. But it feels as if there's a, a, a really, really big idea missing. You know, there's some, something missing in our picture of the universe. Someone in the next maybe 10, 15 years is going to come up with a missing idea. And it's all going to fit together in a much more logical fashion. So I, I have a real feeling that there's a revolution around the corner. You know, I mean, possibly of, of the kind of uh, scale of quantum theory, you know, because I mean, we can't really have uh, our best physical theory, you know, predicting something and being wrong by, you know, one followed by 120 <laughs> zeros, you know, that is, that is really bad. <laughs> the last time there was such a big discrepancy was in, in about 1910 and 1909, and that was when Ernest Rutherford, obviously a New Zealander, um, discovered the structure of the atom, and he discovered that uh, there was this incredibly tiny nucleus at the centre of an atom like a sun, and the electrons orbited around like planets. Um, but the standard picture of physics said that those electrons should shed energy and spiral into the nucleus in a hundred millionth of a second. Well, of course, we know that the atoms that we're made of, well, they certainly survive for our lifetime, and we think they've survived for billions of years. And that was a discrepancy between... Um, an observation and a prediction of one followed by 40 zeros. Yeah. And that led to a revolution. <laughs>